Hello everyone, I am Siddharthan. Currently, we are in the second module of our deep learning course and in this second module, we are discussing about mathematics for deep learning. In today's video, I wanted to give you an idea of the concepts that I will be discussing about linear algebra for deep learning. So let's understand the different concepts that we will be covering and how these concepts are exactly used in deep learning and neural network. So that will be the agenda for today's video and let's get started. So first we will start with vectors and matrices. So vectors and matrices are a crucial aspect in deep learning because all the data that we feed to the neural network are represented as vectors and matrices. If you think about an image, an image is nothing but a three dimensional matrix that has red, green and blue intensity values in the pixels, right? Even if you think about the weights that we have in the neural networks and the neurons, they are also represented as matrices. And because of this, we need to understand about vectors and matrices clearly and also the different operations that we do on these two data types. So that will be the first part that we will be discussing. And then we have linear transformation. So when you feed a data to a neuron, so there will be a linear transformation that happens which is nothing but we multiply this uh, weight along with the input feature and we add some bias to it right so this is what we refer to as linear transformation but again the data can be a vector so you need to do a dot product and so on so this is why also the vector operation is also important so in order to understand what exactly happens within the neuron we need to understand this linear transformation so after this linear transformation only we apply this non-linear activation function so that a deep learning or a neural network can uh, learn from the data so that's why linear transformation is really important and then we have linear equations so the linear equation is uh, mainly used in the optimization part so while we train a neural network we have to optimize it right so when we say optimize it's nothing but uh, finding the optimum parameters or the best parameters for which your loss function is going to be minimum so all these kinds of depends on the systems of linear equation so we will be discussing that in detail for that and then we have vector spaces and subspaces and uh, now the data that we feed to this neural network is often represented as vector as we discussed right so it's represented in a uh, large dimensional space so that's what we call as call as vector space and then we have a subspace so all the spaces in that vector spaces may not be important so we need to figure out these small subspaces that helps us to kind of extract the feature uh, efficiently so all these things happen within the neural network and Again, we are kind of understanding this so that we can understand how neural network works under the hood. So that's why this vector spaces and subspaces would be important. And then we have this eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So these are uh, also used in PCA or principal component analysis, which you might already know, which is mainly used for this dimensionality reduction. So it's again used for finding like which feature can be important like for those purpose so it's it's mainly like involved in uh, matrix operation so if you think about eigenvalues and eigenvectors we will be discussing this in detail when we come to this particular session and then we have this orthogonality so uh, uh, orthogonality also plays kind of a crucial role when we initialize weights and also it's important in the optimization part so we kind of uh, initiate the matrices in the form of orthogonal matrix and this helps in uh, stabilizing the training so that like it can happen efficiently so there are like more nuances to it so that may seem a bit complex right now so we will just take care of this but for now just understand that uh, we have something called as orthogonal matrix and this is going to help us to have a stable training flow and then we have principal component analysis it's not just for deep learning but i thought that this would be helpful for you even if you're doing a machine learning problem so principal component analysis as i said it's it's used for dimensionality reduction or when you have like several features and you don't want to include all those features we perform this dimensionality reduction using this principal component analysis and it lets you do this feature extraction like more efficiently so that you have like more meaningful features and, and i thought that this would be helpful for you in deep learning too so we will be discussing about this so these are all the broader concepts that we will be discussing in this linear algebra for deep learning so i will be adding uh, more topics to this so i've just given you a broad a broader aspect but i'll be adding like more topics to this as well so if you think that there are some other uh, topics that needs to be discussed as well please let me know in the comments i'll see if i can include that too so that's it for uh, from my side in this video and i'll see you in the next upload thanks for watching